Good afternoon. The Committee on Water and Land is on its hearing notice of today is Friday. And this is uh, today's uh, date is March 31st. And we're in room 016. Uh, just some housekeeping measures uh, as we proceed. Um, certainly, we welcome all of you for taking your time here. Uh, to look uh, to appear here for our uh, first, uh, actually one and only item agenda uh, today, and we'd like to uh, do some housekeeping measures, which includes uh, as well, particularly for all those testifying today and those on Zoom, um, additional testimony that is different from your written testimony, and we ask that you stand on your written testimony uh, as well. And for those on Zoom land, um, please note, including those that are speaking today, uh, that your limit, uh, time limit is one uh, minute uh, as well. Uh, we will hear from uh, the nominee first, uh, and then we will go into the testifiers list uh, here this afternoon. We will, I, I also need to add, um, there's going to be a point in time, I will be called uh, to do, um, uh, to take, take a vote that's happening in the committee on, on uh, WAM, Ways and Means, um, on their, uh, another GM, I'm a member of the committee, and so they'll be taking a vote, they'll be meeting now uh, at one o'clock, in the event that they're going to make decisions uh, and need my vote as well, I will be recessing this committee uh, for a few minutes. I head on up to room 211, then come return back to this room uh, and continue the hearing as well. Uh, during that part, I think uh, at about, or later in the part of our hearings, you'll see uh, another departure of our vice chair for a few minutes to go into another hearing to uh, do his casting his vote as well and will return. Okay. And uh, for those of you uh, here, uh, it's the intention of the chair and the committee to do decision making today. Okay. So for the committee on water and land, we'll proceed then with hearing GM 516. And this is submitting for consideration and confirmation as the chairperson, the Department of Land and Natural Resources, gubernatorial nominee, Don Chang, for a term to expire December 31st, 2026. Okay, Ms. Chang, aloha, welcome. Yes. Aloha, my kato. Aloha. Aloha, Chair Inouye and Vice Chair Elefante. Yes, my name is Don Chang. I know I've said that many times to all of you. I am Governor Green's nominee as a chairperson of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. I greatly appreciate the opportunity to appear before this committee and say a few words. First, I'd like to introduce my family. Seated in the back of me is my mother, Edna Chiroma, my daughter, Dana, and her husband, Kahil Williams. And seated on the other side of me is my son, Kapono Chang, and his wife, Monica. I've got one more son who may be running late, but that's my family. And as you can see, this is a family affair. They have my back, as well as they feed our dog, Koa, when I'm working late, which is just about every day. What I say at DLNR is every day is a Monday. There is no holidays, there's no weekends, every day is a Monday. But I am not complaining, because I will tell you, I love being the DLNR chair. As you can see, I come from a very strong family background. We all support one another. My mother's family are the Ho'okanos from the Ahupua of Kahalu'u on Oahu. My tutu is buried on our Kuleana lands where Ohana had Lo'ikalo in the Malka lands and Makai were fishermen or Lavaya in Kaneohe Bay. My mother raised us with very strong Hawaiian culture values of Ohana caring for our ancestral lands and the kuleana giving back to our community. I have continued to raise my children with those same values. My grandmother on my father's side was a picture bride from Okinawa 
who worked in the plantations in Pu'unene. My father served in the National Guard and was activated and served two tours in Vietnam, where he was committed to making sure his men returned to Hawaii safely. While in Vietnam, he was exposed to Agent Orange, subsequently got lung cancer, and he recently passed away. But I know he is proud of me. This is a strong family foundation of where I come from, and I am proud to be Hawaiian and Okinawan. What are the qualifications to serve as the chairperson of the DLNR? I've provided you my resume and responses to your questions, so I won't go over those with you. However, regarding my education, I have a master's degree in social work, and I'm licensed to practice law in Hawaii in federal courts. Professionally, I've worked as a social worker with the Queen Liliokalani's Children's Center. I clerked for Judge Walter Heen at the Intermediate Court of Appeals, was a Deputy Attorney General advising DLNR and the Department of Transportation back in the 80s and the 90s. I was a principal of Kuivalu Consulting that specialized in designing and facilitating culturally sensitive and contentious community issues. I served on the Land Use Commission for seven years and have been on the job for three months. As you consider my nomination, I'd like you to evaluate me not on what others may have said I've done or may not have done, but on what I've done at DLNR over the last 90 days. These are a few of our accomplishments. Act 90, and I know Senator Inouye, she knows that well. DLNR had historically not considered transferring pasture leases to DOA as part Department of Ag as part of the Act 90 lands. I was urged by members of this legislative body to personally get involved and visit these ranches, which I did. What I found was that Lonnie and Bill with Kapapala Ranch and Jerry and Jason with KK Ranch are good stewards of the land. They are committed to ranching and willing to partner with DLNR on forestry management opportunities. So I made the hard decision in consultation with my staff I'm going to transfer those two leases to the Department of Ag. We will be doing an informational briefing before the Land Board in April on our joint efforts with DOA to implement and close out Act, 8, Act 90. Fisher's concerns. In January, this committee held an informational briefing on our concerns of the Fishers regarding DLNRs or Department of Aquatic Resources Initiative called Olomoa 30 by 30, which was to have a goal of 30% of the nearshore waters would be in management, marine managed areas. After hearing their concerns, reviewing our outreach efforts and conferring with staff, I made the hard decision of removing the term 30 by 30 because I was more interested in how we engage with our stakeholders on managing our nearshore waters than what we called the initiative. The Nakoa, the luxury Na Nakoa, was grounded in Honolua Bay, a marine life conservation area on Maui. The grounded vessel already caused damage to the coral, was in real jeopardy of breaking apart in the pristine bay that would be a public safety risk. Rather than waiting for the owner to negotiate with their insurance company to pay for the salvage, I made a decision to use DLNR funds to procure a salvage company to remove the vessel. Randy Cates, the salvage company, did move the vessel out of harm's way. I have no regret for the decision that we took at that time. Although we are getting reimbursed by the insurance company, but at that time, it was more important to remove the vessel. Coastal erosion. About a month ago, the land board made a very bold action regarding impacts of coastal erosion caused by climate change, which is inevitable. DLNR took enforcement action to recommend a fine of $180,000 to a private beachfront landowner in Punalu'u for unauthorized shoreline erosion measures. The land board determined that the owner could pay the fine of $188,000 within 30 days or he could physically move his house off the property the land, and the land board would waive the fine. The land board was, has a public trust duty to preserve and protect public access to public beaches, not to protect private landowners. This was a bold action by the board, 
but it also provided the landowner options. Doe care. Recently, Doe care commissioned 41 new recruits. Mahalo to this legislative body for appropriating the funds to support Doe care. Senator Inouye, Senator Dela Cruz, and the Lieutenant Governor joined in the graduation ceremony. 14 of the newly commissioned officers are working on Hawaii Island, and some of them were part of the joint Doe Care and NOAA team that is investigating the 33 swimmers at Honaunau Bay who are chasing the dolphins. U.S. DOD leases. I requested a meeting with the United States Department of Defense branches to proactively discuss our expectations for the environmental and regulatory review of their requests for use of state lands on milita for military uses. I emphasize the expectation that they will be doing genuine community engagement, in particular with Native Hawaiians and the impacted communities. But we des I decided to take a proactive approach and inform the DOD of what our expectations are. Kahana Valley. For over 40 years, State Parks has tried to manage Kahana Valley as a living park as set forth under the legislation. Unfortunately, for various reasons, it didn't work out as envisioned. Rather than kick this can down the road yet again, in coordination with Representative Quinlan, we went with the Kahana residents and, DO, and Department of Land and Natural Resources has decided to do a district boundary amendment before the Land Use Commission to change the zoning designation from conservation, which is very restrictive, doesn't permit ag, limited residential, to rural, and subdivide the State Park Makai portion and keep the Mako areas for watershed protection. But that provides the Kahana Valley residents much greater certainty about their future. I could go on, but again, I'd like you to evaluate me on what I've accomplished with the department as you consider my nomination. I realize there is opposition to my nomination, and I'd like to address some of those concerns that I'm aware of. Kavai Ha'o Church. Some have expressed that I advise Kavai Ha'o not to do an archaeological inventory survey. When I was asked to assist Kavai Ha'o as a consultant, the, requ the required archaeological inventory, they were, as a consultant, the church's multi-purpose center included an underground garage and SHPD, State Historic Preservation Division, required an archeological inventory survey because of subsurface excavation. I recommended to the church to redesign and not to do an underground parking garage to minimize excavation in the cemetery. They had already disinterred, when they built, originally built Likeke and all, they had disinterred human burial remains the church did redesign and we went back to SHPD with the revised plans. Based upon the revised plans, SHPD required archeological monitoring, not an AIS. In addition, I want people to know there was never an intention to disturb Ivi Kupona and Kavani. Everyone was emotionally impacted when the burials were discerned. There have been others who have expressed concerns about my work with developers. And they assume that that means I'm against environment and I support development. I do not deny that my clients were private developers, but they were also federal, state, county agencies, nonprofits, and NGOs. As I shared before, my work with the developers was not to advocate for their project, but to design a community engagement project that ensured that communities that have historically been disenfranchised, including rural and native Hawaiians, could participate in a meaningful ways. It was to design a process where families with linear and cultural connections could participate in the design process to avoid impacts to Ibi Kupuna. My work focused on process. I do not regret working on any of those projects as I believe the process that I designed enhance their projects and the community's experience. In closing, I'd like to read two letters to the Senate committee from my grandchildren. Why they support their puna. They are my daughter, Dana's children. They are both students at Midpac. Olivia is nine years old and Henry is six. Dear committee members, my name is Olivia Williams. 
I am writing this because I support my puna, Dawn Che. I also know she is the right person for the job because she is great at solving problems and protecting wildlife. Every Thursday, she picks me up from Pula. Puna always asks me, what did you learn? How was school? She is caring, smart, and powerful. So I choose and support Dawn Chan. Sincerely, Olivia Williams. This is from my grandson, Henry, who is six years old. His handwriting is not as neat as his, as his sister, but I can read it. Dear committee members, my name is Henry Williams. I am here to support my puna, Dawn Chang. I think she should have the, I think she should have the job because it is her dream job. And she has good resources. Mahalo, Henry. So, with that, um, I am available to answer any questions and I thank you very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you um, so much. Matter of fact, I think you've covered most of the questions that I had, um, and I'm sure I'm, I'm sure our, our committees are open anyway to ask some questions. So, with that said, uh, it, and most importantly, um, your work as principal of uh, Huivalu mm -hmm. Consulting. So, as of today, um, I do you still um, have your business uh, in place? And to add, you know, if you, there is any sense of a possible conflict in any of the uh, work uh, that comes before uh, you as a chair, also as a chair of the, on the board as well, uh, and to any issues that arise in the department. Thank you very much, Senator, for that question. Um, with respect to the company, Kuivali, quite frankly, I was actually winding down the business. So, um, we officially closed the business when the governor, when I interviewed and he asked me to be the chairperson. We officially closed the business, took down the, our website. Um, I have, and I have no, we've closed all our work with all of our clients. With respect to conflicts of interest, I will disclose at any time if I have, if I have worked with um, a particular uh, matter that comes before the board. I have, I will share with you, with respect to Mauna Kea, I did do a lot of work on Mauna Kea. I helped to prepare the Mauna Kea Comprehensive Management Plan. So while the chairperson of the land board can sit on the Mauna Kea Stewardship Authority, I have delegated that to the first deputy, Lar Ka'akua. We had a matter last week before the land board regarding, um, again, a matter related to the comprehensive management plan involving a contested case hearing. I did recuse myself from that matter and literally stepped out of the room to permit the board to continue. So um, I am very comfortable with making disclosures and it's even the appearance of a conflict. Um, I, you know, I can be, I don't, we have a hard enough job as it is. I don't wanna be a distraction. So um, I am comfortable making disclosures and recusing myself when appropriate or also confirm with the Attorney General's Office or the Ethics Commission. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. And just a, a brief statement from myself as well, pertaining to the Chair's um, opening statement with regards to Act 90 and the transferring of lands from uh, DLNR over to uh, DOA uh, only uh, on agricultural lands. And just to say that, uh, that bill back in 2003, I initiated that action and the governor signed it. I've been dealing with that, being in the Senate my first 10 years, I left and I returned um, after six years, returned to the Senate in 2014. 2015 through today or this year, uh, we've made attempts to at least recognize why the delays in transferring of those lands. And I'll tell you, coming from our standpoint as members of the legislature voted into office by our constituents, we try to do the best we can for our constituents as well as for the people in agriculture industry. So with that said, we've had my bill for several years that passes the Senate and dies somewhere in the House. 
but also because of the opposition of the land division. And uh, having said that, we have other issues, land leases on Big Island in particular, land leases that also affect not only the Big Island, but any type of leases that affects the rest of the state. And this also carries over, and I can say to DHH lands sometimes because we are uh, sometimes DLNR lands, there's language in there that, you know, carries over to DHH in regulations. Um, and so I am, um, with trying to do something for the people of the state uh, in our discussions, and I'm happy that you're taking the initiative. And I thank you for at least doing the job uh, that the chair must recognize and make sure, um, you know, you've, uh, we have not had an administrator, not the directors, who take their time to go and visit any of the issues throughout our state. But I'm happy that you yourself, including your deputy, have tried to address some of the issues, not understanding, mm -hmm. you know, to an extent uh, when, where you should have known uh, but, but I recognize with the new administration coming in that the initiatives are made. Uh, so we thank you with regards um, to trying to do the best um, for initiatives that are set up by the legislature as well. But why do we need to have a bill to create that kind of a message that we've already done years ago that's in statute? And so um, with that said, I was going to ask you the question, but you already answered in your opening statement. I will, um, there is an issue. Um, I've done water and land committee in my first 10 years from 1998 to 2010 when I left, uh, 2008. And it seems like I returned, but there still seems to be issues, mm -hmm. issues within the agencies, including DLNR. And you know, uh, with you, with a new face, with a new administration, seems like you're taking a bolder um, actions. And it always seems like, and I think it prevails throughout many agencies uh, in the state, where division administrators make decisions without the consultation of the directors. And I, I believe I did bring that to your attention um, because that's what we're all faced here for many years. And hopefully we don't continue the same practice that's shown by different agencies, including some in your divisions. Um, so I, we want to hear from you uh, how you're going to uh, project your role as chair of the department and as chair of the board. Um, the responsibilities of that role because it lies on you. Right. And so a position that must be made clear, you know, to those that you manage, uh, your administrators uh, as well, um, to make sure, uh, I'd like to hear how would you manage that because it seems like there was a lack of those skills in the past years. And I, I'd like to say that, but to me, I'm saying that for all of other agencies as well. That's fair. I thank you for the question, Senator. I mean, um, you will find that I am more of a process person than a subs. I, I have sur been surrounded by very good DLNR staff. I mean, these are people who have a passion for what they do. They choose DLNR. But I also understand that um, we, DLNR, because our Kulian is so vast, 1.3 million acres of land, three miles of ocean waters, all state parks, everything in between. That sometimes we have conflicting, I, I think one of the greatest challenges that I have at the LNR is this sort of this conflicting mission. We have to preserve and protect land, water, and cultural and natural resources. But at the same time, we have to balance, we have to um, also generate sufficient revenues. So I think sometimes our divisions work in isolation rather than in coordination. So again, I'm a process person. 
Um, as issues have come before me, I have triaged it. I have brought, for example, land division, DOFA. So when we were looking at Act 90, brought all the relevant divisions together, got all of their input. And I told them, I won't make a unilateral decision, but I will make a hard decision. We're not gonna kick the can. But so, so for some of those divisions where the directors or the administrators, and I won't say that there aren't a few because there have been names that have been brought to my attention. I guess what I'd ask the legislators is to be patient, is to let me manage the division through processing, through accountability, um, by making it very clear that the decisions, if they're discretionary, are made by the, di by the director, or in the case of matters that come before the board, they're made by the board as a whole. So I think that this is, and I'm not here to question the wisdom of any of the previous administrators. I think people make decisions based upon the information as well as the experiences that they bring. I mean, I think what's been fortunate about this Governor Green's appointment of essentially three Native Hawaiians to lead DLNR is a greater appreciation that um, we bring some sensitivity to communities that have historically not been engaged in the process. So I know I'm kind of going in a very long way to answer your question, but um, I am holding the administrators accountable. I'm also doing more community engagement. We have to be out in the community and listen. When you had that informational meeting for the Fishers, that was very helpful. You can see there's obviously two sides of the story here. So. I mean, I think it's, so we are trying to do that going on Maui, trying to do more meetings with the community to really understand what are the issues related to why are these vessels grounding? What do we do? Is there a better approach? Um, even hunting, I got a call from Senator Decoy raising similar issues related to hunting. So what I, again, my approach is not to make a decision in isolation only with staff. It is to do, to do some ground truthing with the people that are on the ground, especially the community, to try to find a path forward. Because for me, we cannot steward, Dill and I cannot steward all these resources by ourselves. We need to have partnerships and collaborations. So long answer, but what I'm essentially saying is that um, our administrators will work in coordination, coordination with leadership and engaging the communities. Decisions won't be made unilaterally, but there will be some accountability for decisions. And just because a decision has been a particular way, doesn't mean that that's how we're always gonna make the decision. Well, that's refreshing and that's good to hear. Um, you know, and I'm sure the rest of the agencies that coexist uh, in a particular division um, is, is, will, you know, is happy that you're saying it because that means that they, they too should always be working with their administrator partners right. within the agencies. Um, members, please, any questions? Yes, Vice Chair uh, Elefanti. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Chang, for your willingness uh, to serve and thank you for um, sharing you know, your background experience. Um, I do appreciate uh, you sharing about the 30 by 30 mm -hmm. and being open and listening to feedback after the informational briefing and talking to uh, DAR and your staff and changing sort of that course of direction after hearing from concerns for that. So thank you for that. Um, I just have a few questions and these have come up before, um, which you're, you should be aware of. I think I'll start with the first one, which has been in the recent news regarding personnel issues. You touched yes. briefly about it to answering Chair's question, but now that if you were to get confirmed, how would you, one, set the context and culture um, at DLNR under your leadership so that incidences like that, obviously there should be zero tolerance for those type of incidences or whatever else maybe going on. No, and, and I appreciate that question, Senator, as I mean, I think that is the elephant in the room in some, uh, for some. I am aware 
Um, it is a personnel matter, so I'm not going to specifically yeah. opine on that. Nonetheless, um, I have also contacted our HR person, and I've contacted the Department of um, the Herd to also get some guidance on training opportunities, as well as holding our, our administrators accountable through, uh, through an evaluation form, putting, um, putting them on notice that there are concerns. I've tried to ban some from the public, but I can't really do that. But joking aside, I mean, this is a very serious issue. We're not taking it lightly. So we are trying to ensure that um, they're being held accountable. We will evaluate their performance. I mean, my difficulty is just being here 30 days in, in this position um, and not having the historical relationship with them. But nonetheless, um, I am the administrator over all of them. I am ultimately responsible for their, their actions while they work for the department. So all I can tell you is that we will hold all administrators accountable. There is a zero tolerance in the state. Um, we will require a performance evaluation on both um, matters that relate specifically to the job and also behavior. So that's, I mean, I think that that's what I can commit to doing without necessarily getting into specific details. Great, thank you. And then just two other questions, if I may, sure. Chair. Sure, proceed. Um, I'm grateful to hear about the DOD leases that are coming up. I think that's an important component as we negotiate with our United States military. Um, and I hope, you know, based on your experience that uh, through that process that the state, you know, gets a fair shot of how we renegotiate these important lands. So. I just want to acknowledge that that is an important thing that will come up in the next few years. And you're right. And you know what I tried to express with DOD is um, we are we are the regulatory agency. We're not here to judge whether they will or will not. That they are required to comply with the environmental requirements. If there's conservation land required with conservation district permits, the lease is down the end of the road. But for me. And a lot of the work that I did, both as a social worker, as as in my uh, consulting work, communities are not involved. And um, so even at DLNR, a little side note, we are doing a lot more informational briefings before the land board, providing the public an opportunity to get comments. So before Sea Worm, our water commission, I've told the Navy, um, we'd like a briefing from them before the Sea Worm on the status of uh, Red Hill. So I think I, what I'm trying to say is I want to create the forums for good public uh, opportunities for the public to be informed, um, get good information, make comments before decisions have to be made. But we have been very clear both with DOD locally as well as DOD um, in Washington, D.C., what our expectations are. Okay. Um, so I, I think they realize this is a very different time than 60 years ago. For all of us. So yes, thank you for that. And then the other question I have, and this is my last one, um, specifically has to do with the small boat harbors. Um, we did have a hearing, thanks to Chair Inouye yes. for having that hearing. There was a measure that was before that was an administration bill to do a P3 for some of these small boat harbors. Uh, one of the concerns I have is the deferred maintenance for a lot of these small boat harbors. And I think the message is, you know, going back to the drawing board to see how that would be determined in the future. So do you have any vision or plan and how you see that in terms of our maintenance, improving our small board harbors? Because um, there is a lot of deferred maintenance in terms of funding for, for that particular section of DLNR. Uh, you're absolutely right, Senator. And um, it, it just so happened today that um, we have asked all of our divisions, in particular harbors, small boat harbors to come down with a priority for um, both future CIQ requests, or, but a very short window, two years, what can we do? I mean, a lot of the issues involve um, not only deferred maintenance, but regulations, are we updating our rules? But clearly our facilities, if we're gonna charge people, they have to be, um, they have to be in a condition that they can use them. So um, 
I am asking the divisions in particular Dobar to come up with that prioritization of um, which facilities need to be upgraded first and try to give them an infusion of resources. Thank you, Ms. Chen. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. Thank you. And members of the committee, uh, questions, please. And it's pretty much customarily here in the Senate that any of our hearings, even if you're not a member of the committee, any of our senators uh, may uh, want to sit at our hearings as well. And so um, we ha we do have Senator Kim here uh, and we invite her as well Thank you. Uh, and appreciate her presence here. Uh, yes, Senator Favela. Um, since uh, Senator Lafonte brought it up, um, this is my biggest concern. Land leases, DOD leases. When it's gonna to come to a determination that uh, leases are leases, not landmarks, not land owned. Uh, some of the places like with the DOT have, DOD have, uh, <clears throat> is well over their purpose of what, when we was at war and when we needed these certain places that they have occupied over the years. But we, let, we also gotta let the DOD know that they don't own the land. Mm -hmm. And because they're not still good stewards of the land for decades, um, why are we continuing, and you can, answer that or not. Why are we continuing entertaining, extending leases like Wakaloa, mm -hmm. Schofield, Makua, a few others, um, Red Hill, Pearl Harbor, um, those areas because they never was good storage from decades ago. So what is the determination of, because if I'm not good storage of my land, right, and city, state, everybody gets involved. But when it comes to DOT, are they, are they following under different rules? Because Red Hill was a disaster before the disaster. It was leaking from the day they had put it in and had documentations and documentations. So when is it gonna be enough is enough for our lands that's being pretty much raped by the DOD and continue to do that? And our people is suffering from the effects of their disrespect for the Aino. Um, that's what I like to know because not just on the DOD and the military side. I'm talking about the private side because these lands, and I knew I took a 65 year lease. I knew at the end of the lease, I'm gonna to have to negotiate or the lease is gonna go back to fair market value. Wakaloa dollar was 40 something years. I'm willing to give you guys $2 and I get the lease. That's the kind of stuff that is unappreciated. And then all of our military bases, good luck. There's no Hawaiian flag. Because they said they don't have to fly it. Because it's not Hawaii, this is America. But that's not good. That's not bono for the people who call Hawaii their home. And we was here first, and this is our home. So we gotta make them recognize. How are we gonna recognize them? They, they gotta be put on notice that the long-term leases, not automatically because um, you're the military, you're gonna get them renewed. Because I'm in opposition to Puaka law needs to go back to the people. The things that they're doing at Puaka Law is not great. So, Same with Makua. So that's the question. So Senator, okay. the question, yeah. Yeah, I, I just like to elaborate because the chair does summarize. Yeah. I figure if she can summarize, I like summarize too. So I'm just saying that. So I'm just gonna let you know that's that's one of them. That's not even my question. Okay. But it's brought up because people thinking they own the land. Any of our land that is being leased, they don't own it. And we need to put set a precedence and that should be within you going forward and letting them know, going forward, that they don't own the land. Mm -hmm. And it has to go back to fair market value. And if cannot, then I will let it. Well, Senator, you're absolutely right. And again, I, this is not 60 years ago when these leases were originally negotiated. Um, we are not inviting, we haven't invited the, the, the DOD to submit these to us. It is they are initiating that. So we are gonna process what they submit to us but at the same time, the courts have also told us, Dylan, are you of a responsibility, right? So we have been very clear with DOD. The terms and conditions of the leases will be very different from what they were 60 years ago. They will include much, much greater um, oversight by DLNR, monitoring, testing, because you're right, Senator, at the end of the day, that Opala comes back to us, yes. right? And we have inherited too much of that. So it is our burden, our obligation to ensure that those leases 
have protections for the people of Hawaii for the future when they come back. But again, we're not we are not soliciting or inviting them to submit a you know a, a lease. It is their it's their choice. We will process what they submit to us. So and then there will be a balance. But that is um, so. Again, if they submit something to us, an environmental impact statement, a conservation district use permit or lease, we will process those. But we will treat them with the legal requirements that are today, as well as what the community comes in with. We're going to balance all of that. And the board has recently taken very bold actions to listen to the community. So we will do that. Thank you for that. And just for the medical part, um, I'll, I'll really um, hope that when you do have the community um, come out to tell them to come and bring some of the um, problems that they have um, over the years, respiratory, um, lung cancer, yeah. kidney, you name them, because of the years of desecration of our land. So thank you for that. So I get about 75 more questions, but <laughs> I think um, I, I think I think I'm gonna just I just gonna ask yeah. you one more then just for now. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, getting on a lighter note. <laughs> okay. Okay. What is your method of uh, determination of what is working and what is not working in the Illinois? Hmm, that is an interesting question. What is my determination? Um, you know, um, I expect them outputs. I mean, if, if you're going to if you're going to set forth a program a project, before you do that, what are you hoping to accomplish? And did you accomplish that? We have to have milestones. So I am looking for metrics to evaluate. Have we accomplished what we said we're going to accomplish? And if and I don't want to do something just because we've always done it. And and that's sometimes how with government is because we do things because it's always been the same. But you know, I will tell you, the staff at DLNR, they're creative, they're innovative. We're trying to move forward with climate change initiatives, trying to address the changing transition, as well as changing the change, the, the heightened expectations by our community. Our communities are paying attention. It's like you said, enough is enough. So then that comes back on the administration. So what are you gonna do differently? So I assure you, we are taking very seriously. We're listening to the community because I know what happens when you don't listen to the community. You're going to get caught in a contested case hearing, a lawsuit, and you may never get to do what you're going to do. So I am really pushing our department to be much more proactive, not fear the community, but embrace and engage with them. And so that's why I have been having, like I said, these informational briefings at the land board before a decision is made. So people don't feel so pressured, like board members don't feel like, oh, I have to make a decision, or the community doesn't feel so compelled, they have to take one side or the other. But it's a safe space for good conversation, good information, then you can kind of mull over it for a little while, and then the next month they'll come back with decision making. So I'm trying to institute a different process and culture. I will tell you, I worked with DOT before, to do community meetings, oh my God, engineers would know. But you know what, times are changing. You yeah. gotta do that, right? If you don't deal with them now, and this is what I used to tell clients, the back end is a bitch. It's lawsuits, it's delays, it's, so pay up front. Do good engagement with that community. They may not like it, but at least if they feel like they were engaged, they are more apt to accept the outcome, not always. But more apt to accept the outcome. Okay, just Thank you. They kind of goes in together, but um, you know, it's it's great that it's great that you you said that because when you hide, you divide, right? Mm -hmm. So we're not to hide. So thank you for the healing. So this this tool is kind of come together because you already said you're talking. Did you get a chance to meet all of you the the LNR employees already? I have met not all of the employees. Many of them are on the the neighbor islands. So what I am proposing to do, I talked to the first deputy about that is actually hold, hold community meetings on the islands and then bring out all of our staff. Um, we went to Molokai, Molokai had a resource there. So a lot of our staff members from Molokai came out to that meeting and they, well, came out to the fair. So, you know, we need to put a face to the name, to, to a department, and they know the, the community much better than we do in Honolulu. So um, I, am, I have not met everybody, 
I know my division administrators really well, but um, we do intend to do more outreach with our own staff in the communities that they come from. And you know, the next is just the time frame you when you're going to be trying, thinking that you're going to be meeting with all of them. You know, we started, we're thinking about starting these community meetings. Um, kind of depends upon you guys. If you confirm me, I can do it sooner than later. <laughs> Okay. Oh, you, oh, you, okay. 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 <laughs> Members, any further questions from the committee? Yes, yes. Senator uh, McKelvey from Thank Maui. Thank you so much. Um, Thank you for being here for the confirmation hearing. You know, I'll, I'll put up the, there's good and bad. You know, I got to be honest with you, before you came on, no director, I think I said this in the first mm -hmm. deputy who's even stepped foot in my island alone, my district. Mm -hmm. um, there, the fact that you took what happened in Honolulu in line is seriously, you expedited it. We had before your tenure boats that sat there for three to four years. We still have them. Um, we also have issues that are going on um, with the fact that you listened to the community in the contested case hearing with the board and recommended they reject the use of public monies for the, the plan, which was you looked at the CIS and you saw that it was deficient and listened to the Native Hawaiian community. So I thank you for that. But on the other side, so I want to acknowledge the good and the change okay. you've done. But on the other side, and I believe it's been touched on earlier, a lot of these divisions have been running rampant and running rogue. Okay, I'm sorry, but... Dobor has systematically decimated through sheer wanton neglect, which would almost, in my case, if it was happening to a human being, would be a, a foul super abuse. How do you let, after repeated audit after audit after audit, this done, rack up $330 million in deferred maintenance, and then continue to back up the plan that we're just going to privatize these things no private person in the right mind would take a $330 million deficient thing. We have situations where we had a south swell. There was no dredging done. There's still no dredging. We have critical navigational aids that took literally almost a whole year to do. We have federal transit authority monies, federal monies that were spent on a ferry pier that the ferry itself can't even use. Okay, I mean, and the list goes on and on. The one commonality I think we have from Hilo to Hanalei is that every small boat harbor, every recreational user, every community member is up in arms. And so, I mean, I know you want to work with your division chiefs, but there needs to be, you are the director. What strong actions are you going to take to, and the thing is, is that privatize, privatize, privatize. And Yet this session, there were bills looking at other options, and yet you stood there and said, we're going to go ahead and continue to stick our heels in the sand on privatization. What are you going to do about this situation? It's actually out of control. And, you know, Senator McKelvey, I'm, I hear you. I mean, you are not the only one. I, and I'm not, I'm not making any excuses. I would tell you in 1994, DOT transferred small boat harbors over to DLNR. This is this was a mis we now can say this was a mis it was an unfunded liability. They came over, um, and I, I'm not going to make an excuse. They are a very difficult because they don't fit. Small boat harbors does not fit with DLNR's mission. Recreational boating may, but not small boat harbors where you have these facilities. Um, and I'm not kicking this can down the road, but I have started conversation with Ed Sniffen. I think small boat harbors need to go back to DOT. But in the meantime, we are, Laura and I have made the bill bar a priority out of sheer survival. They consume so much of our time. That, <laughs> so, so we have no other, I mean, this isn't the choice that I'd like to make. I'd, I'd like to make the choice where the vi divisions are moving smoothly. They have a hard mission. They they are dealing with a very difficult, um, dif difficult what they inherited. No excuse. But Laura and I are just we are we're making that a priority. I mean we're looking at we're looking at Lahaina, looking at Kaanapali. What can we do over there differently? Can we stop moorings for a little while? So we're working with our attorney general's office about. How can we legally address some of these things 
trying to look at different maintenance, making that a priority in our budget, giving them the money that they need to upgrade these facilities, especially for charging, not going rampant with letting people just start up a, a and we're talking about sting operations for commercial activities with do with do care. So I assure you, we are trying very hard. It's heartening to hear that, but providing money in and of itself isn't doing it. The money isn't being executed. The, the harbor listeners aren't being listened to. And I appreciate the fact that you're going to try the tenure, but I, I stress this over and over again because I honestly think it's time for regime change, big changes in that division. And so that's what I'm kind of asking you is, are you willing to make the hard choices of accountability in so far as metrics, strong metrics and potential reorganizations and changes so that those metrics aren't adhered yeah. to, that there'll be accountability. Yes, yes. Okay. I mean, I've contacted our D, I've contacted our personnel office. I'm not, I'm not gonna talk about specifics, but yes. I mean, like I, I mean, I think this legislative body has consistently shared the same thing you have. So, but I cannot just unilaterally decide I'm gonna fire somebody. I mean, I need to have a good record. You know, what are we evaluating him on? What are we, what are we, what's, what's the metrics? Job what's performance, his... complaints, years of neglect. I mean, those, are, those aren't personnel driven things. This is a productivity metric things. And so that's what I wanted to leave you with, but it's not just this division. We have issues with state parks and unencumbered lands. And so I guess, you know, we would try to introduce things to bring community, community accountability and funding to some of these under the legislature acquired LaPoa point. There's been no money given at all. We're trying to move bills to do this. So I guess my question is when it comes to, and we've had bills for carrying capacity studies to address how many visitors beyond a visitor impact fee should there be and what can be done to reserve space for locals. And your parks division has been opposed to them. And we, uh, so what would you be doing to ensure that if we implement impact fees, what kind of management reservation will there be for the local community, whether it's free parking down at the Oloi or whether it's access to a state beach park so that the locals show up on the weekend, including our Maui mayor, mm -hmm. they know there's a parking space for them and on the, by the beach. Yep. You raise really valid points. I mean, and, and, you know, again, my style is not to micromanage the divisions, mm -hmm. but it is to hear from them, what are their priorities? What are their focus? And my understanding with Honolulu, there is a master planning process. It may not be moving as fast as everyone would want. I mean, we don't have a lot of capacity. So they're trying to prioritize their park system. They actually are doing a really good job. In, but I understand that in some areas, they're feeling like they're being shortchanged. So I just want to ask you, I know patients, everybody, you always feel like you're on the bottom of the list. State Parks is really trying to do the best they can. They have found the reservation system. They're trying to employ that where they have the capacity because it has been a successful program. They have managed visitor experience with less people, reservations for local people and parking for free for local people, as well as no, no fee to entrance but they're generating twice as much revenue. But that took us a while. State parks, that didn't just happen overnight. They have to work on that to get them to, to that point. So now they've, be, they've begun to have an infrastructure where they can, they can duplicate that in other state parks, but they've got to make sure they've got the restroom facilities, working water, so it's not, a, it's not like Hapuna. So I assure you, they are working on it. They're trying to you know, utilize whatever capacity they have. I'm also telling them, Tell me what you need. If you need more capacity, let us know what you need. See if we can move things around. But it is, they're all trying their best. And they really are, um, I mean, they are trying their best to meet a multiple different constituents needs. And we know that not everybody's getting this, getting put on the top of the priority. But I assure you, I hear you, Senator McKelvey, and we're working on real quick last question chair yes. i appreciate the indulgence you know enforcement lack of enforcement has been a common driver in all yes. of this and you know i appreciate the fact to acknowledge the good the academy has stood up we've got seven new people on maui we've got a bunch of additional officers but let's face it there's still going to be a huge dearth of enforcement ability you had an app that was supposed to be for reporting and it's good to be seeing. And I appreciate First Deputy acknowledging the fact that there should be a dispatcher position. So when people actually use the app, 
it gets followed up on. But what innovation and enforcement as the director are you going to seek to do so you can maximize manpower to provide more coverage and immediate response to violations and collect the evidence needed for prosecutorial action? I mean, we've talked about doing sting operations, about mobilizing a whole group of people to, sh to, to emphasize or try to get deterrence. I mean, to a large extent, I am deferring to my division to come up with recommendations based upon, and it's also based upon meeting with communities. What works? Can we get collaborate like Makai Watch? Can we work with the communities to develop a collaboration where they're helping us? Are we providing them the tools to help us? So I, we are trying to utilize a multitude of tools to increase our, our, our adult care capacity, utilizing partners that are already doing that. Um, this, this graduating class of 41 was an insurgence of, of necessary capacity. Um, we're looking at trying to get, and the Senate seems to be very supportive of us, every year trying to get 25 new dole care officers. That will be crucial to our ability to timely respond in multiple different ways to, to concerns that come up. But I know that a lot of this is interrelated. I mean, we should be monitoring all this unregulated commercial activities. And so I said, you know, let's, use, let's do sting operations where you can mobilize people from Oahu if you need to. Have a strong presence. But these guys are doing anywhere from going on the beaches for homeless to going up in the forest to look out for hunters and in, uh, everything in between. Well, that's why you should use the new DLE we've created. They're willing to jump in and help provide, yeah. provide support for that. And just for the record, the last comment question is that I appreciate this new look at Makai Watch because it was the very same yeah. administrator who testified against and killed the bills that we introduced in the past to stand up Makai Watch. So the fact that you are re-embracing what has worked with involved in the community is appreciated. Chair, thank you so much for your indulgence. Okay, you're welcome. You. Committee members, Senator Chang. Thank you, Chair. Um, just one question. Yes. So I appreciated your deputy's um, announcement at her hearing that um, your department would be proceeding with affordable housing at the East Kapolei parcels. Um, it's very much needed in the community. Are there other parcels that you think would be appropriate as affordable housing? And what other mm -hmm. actions will you take to support the development of more housing for our people? We're actually working with um, looking on the island of, of Kauai. They also, they currently have an existing where our Lehui base yard is. So looking at doing a land exchange with them so they can expand their affordable housing um, in Lehui. So trying to, trying to look at where do you have currently have infrastructure that can so, social services, transportation. Um, where do we have either unencumbered state lands that we can make that available? Because we ourselves are not in the housing, that's not our specialty, but if we can make lands available for those who are, I think that's what we're trying to do is add that to the mix. That's kind of our expertise is land. I mean, most of our lands aren't, aren't in the best places, but we're willing to look at making um, state lands that can be available to do affordable housing and partner up. So we're open to that. We understand that is a priority of this administration and this legislature. Thank you. If you could get us a list maybe when the okay. time is right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Kim. Yes. I think. Welcome. Um, Madam Chair, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to come in and ask questions, just the public to know that we only have two opportunities to t meet or talk with our um, nominees that we take very seriously. One is in private in our office, then you don't get to hear any of the answers, or the other is in public where you, you get to hear the question and the answers as well. So Don, I appreciate um, you meeting with me, yes. and we went over a lot of uh, items in the office, but there are a couple of things that came up after the fact or that I didn't get to ask, so I, I okay. thought this would be a good opportunity. Um, one is you submitted a testimony for higher ed regarding positions at RCUH. So I wanted to ask you, how many positions does the department have with RCUH? Um, I do not know the exact number, but we have a considerable Don, number. Don, can you oh, make sure you're, you're speaking? Okay. Just, yeah. just move sure. it. Yeah. 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 That's comfortable yeah. for you. Thank you. Senator, you know, I mean, Senator Kim, I'm sorry, I don't know the exact number, but I do know like our Division of Forestry and Wildlife and our Division of Aquatic Resources um, utilizes um, RCUH uh, to supplement their staff, especially when we have um, specialized positions or we have receipt of grants. 
that we do utilize RCUH because they can more quickly um, provide us capacity to fill those positions. So I certainly understand when there is a federal grant involved, yes. but it's been some practice in the past that to circumvent the legislative process and to circumvent civil service, that departments have been going to RCUH because they are exempt from procurement and exempt from civil service. And the unions have been very concerned about this. And it was, you know, I don't believe that uh, there is a, any kind of authorization that you're allowed to circumvent the process and go through RCUH unless it's through a grant. Um, so if you have, and I'm not sure how that money is being spent or transferred and who's paying. And we can provide you greater accountability for that. We can have our staff meet with you. We are not intending to circumvent the law. I think it, we have found working with RCUH on these grants has facilitated our ability to timely respond, especially on matters involving um, you know, forestry or aquatic kinds of programs. So, but I do not know specifically the number. I, it is not our intention to circumvent the legislative process as well. Okay. I mean, but it has been, it's been used for that. And I can see for invasive species, we specifically uh, feel that that needs to be done quickly. But you know, every, everybody would want to go through RCUH because they can bypass all of this. And that was not the intent for RCUH. Right. So um, yeah, if you can get us that information. Sure. And that, you know, the practice uh, aside from the grants and invasive species, if you've got people that have been on U RCUH for years, I would like to know how long they've been there because then that is definitely circumventing um, the civil service process. I will get the answer for you. I'll have our divisions. I'll work with our divisions to provide you that. Okay. I don't, again, I don't believe that's our intent, but I will get those answers. Right. For you. Sometimes okay. it's not necessarily the intent, but yeah. that's... That what happens and you know they don't you don't report that to ways and means it's not part of the budget and and so th those are the concerns that we have now, i appreciate that i think at times that we are receiving these funds so quickly and we need to expend those but i will work with our department on specifically getting you that answer okay and you. the last one is i think we talked about it my last question yes. regarding uh, um, the bill the Mauna Kea bill that you you specifically told me that it was only for the interim and did not tell me that they were taking away some of the some of the leases that was given in the original measure, which was really troubling that yeah. I was not given the accurate information. Yes. So. And I'm sorry, I I I thought I had emailed you a correction because you were right, and I talked yeah, after some, the fact. Right, yeah, but I, yeah. so I went and and checked, and you were right. Yeah. That was the intention of Act Two Fifty Five. Um, so I just hope in the future that yeah. if you're not sure that you, you don't give yeah. wrong information. No, and my intention wasn't to give wrong information. I think when we looked at Act 255, it didn't specifically say 183C conservation lands. So we looked at it purely, purely from a statutory no, construction. I understand that, but what you said was this measure was only during the five-year period that it transitional period that it would be under DLNR and everything goes back to the Mauna Kea. But then what the bill actually did was took away 171, which was in part of Mauna Kea, and the bill actually took it away and it was never going to go back. So that's a huge difference. Well, it, but except when it related to conservation district lands where we were issuing out this, um, we were using that process. So I, you were right, though I corrected that. I didn't intend to mislead you. Okay. That was my understanding. Yeah. I, we I, subsequently amended our, our, our testimony. And I appreciate that. And I hope that, but I just in the future, you can, sure. yeah. If you're not sure, then no. you. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. Thank you That's so fair. much. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions um, from uh, this panel here? Uh, we will go into uh, testimonies. Uh, there's quite a lot. Uh, and we will start with governor's office. We did receive, I think someone was here earlier and I'm sure they'll be returning. Uh, let's see, we have testimonies from DLNR, but you already did your part. Uh, who is representing the division? 
Aloha Chair, Aloha. Vice Chair, Committee Members, Laura Ka'akua, Deputy Director for the Department of Land and Natural Resources. The department stands in strong support of Don Chang as Chairman, Chairperson of the Board of Land and Natural Resources. I wanted to just take uh, this minute to share with you uh, my honest impressions from this these first couple months working together. Um, I have never had the opportunity to work with Don Chang before. We came uh, into this new role from different fields. And um, I just wanted to give you folks the opportunity to hear from me directly on what my experience has been like. I found Ms. Chang to be very consistent. Then that's the feedback I've told everyone um, who I've had, who has asked me that question on what, how it's been. Um, she's very consistent in uh, a phrase that she often says, which is, we will not kick the can down the road. And she means it. Um, and she pushes myself, she pushes all of our administrators and our staff to tackle the hard issues now. Um, she's been very consistent in terms of community process. We have big plans for how DLNR will be engaging with the community moving forward including listening sessions on every island this summer. Um, she's been very consistent with uh, making sure and really changing the culture in terms of um, having project proponents do kapa'akai analysis and uh, share with the department how they will be protecting traditional and customary practices in their proposed projects. Uh, and she's been very consistent with work ethic. Um, this is something that, you know, you folks get to see a uh, chair before you, but I will tell you she's the first one in the office and the last one to go home. She sees a lot of darkness outside of the Kaleni Moku building. Um, her work ethic is really extraordinary. She takes this, this uh, kuleana very seriously. So just wanted to share my, my honest impressions with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Department of Transportation, Ed Sniffen, or representative from the agency uh, sends communication in support mm -hmm. as well as was here. Uh, and I'm calling all those who did sign up to speak uh, as well. Um, Land Use Commission, Dan Oren Decker. I'm writing a quote, one of the planners. Thank you so much. Okay, Ahamoku, let's see, is Lemana here or uh, Damate? And um, okay, and the chair of Ahamoku. Aloha. Aloha Chair and uh, Vice Chair Lepante and members of the committee. We are honored to be here today to speak on behalf of um, the nominee, Don Chang. In deference to Kupuna, I'm going to let Rahi speak first. Go ahead. Thank you. Aloha, Aloha Mai Kako, um, Chair, uh, members of the committee. My name is the Aloha Rocky Kalohiva. I'm going to speak in great support of Don and um, you, you have my, my, our written testimony before you, I would just like to add a few comments. Don was very instrumental in helping us get the National Estuary Resource Reserve to the Hei'a Hua. She had numerous meetings in the community, which was a challenge because of course, a community does not trust government anymore. So we had meetings at schools, that, in the cafeterias, that people were outside the doors. It was a challenge for Don. She did, she did her job well. She got the community to um, support the nurse after uh, months of meetings and she even went to the national on the national level and let them know that the people of Hi'ia will accept the nurse only if we have the cultural component in there. So she set a precedent on a national level. We are the only nurse in the whole nation that has a cultural component. We were number 29th in the nation. So that is something she, I know she'll do a good job. Ah, she's from the Kola Pokomoko. <laughs> yes, um, mahalo. I'll be very brief. I've known Don Chang for the past 20, 30 years. And in her capacity as the development consultant, she has worked with Ahamoku, where we were able to 
at least introduce her into communities where whatever the issue was, her advice to her clients were always to make sure they follow what the communities wanted. Most times they were not happy. And then the last thing is that yesterday, on March 30th, Ahamoku had the first meeting in five years. And that was because Don Chang helped me set that up, where all eight island po'o arrived and had the opportunity to meet face to face with all of the DLNR administrators so that they can begin the process of community consolidation. Uh, with, for that, we're very, very grateful. She has we're happy support. to have Ahamoku back into the system. We're back in. Thank you. Okay. Mahalo. Mahalo. Okay. Kao uh, Olavi Island Reserve Commission. I think I saw Michael Nambu OP somewhere. Aloha. Hello, I'm Mike Nahopi, Executive Director, Kahoolawe Island Reserve Commission. Uh, we stand in our testimony in support of Dawn. Uh, I've known her for almost over 30 years. Uh, first starting as a young Navy officer in command of Kahoolawe. She was part of the transition of Kahoolawe, uh, helping the Kirk from its early days. And she knows very well our history, the things that had to go through with negotiating with the Navy and all the cleanup and issues that we've had over the years. So we're very thankful that we have somebody who finally understands us uh, taking the lead in DLNR and she has put us up front and foremost in a lot of her planning. So uh, we're very thankful for that and we support what she has done for us over the years. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, hello. Okay. Jay Butai, Department of Labor. Okay. Sense communication in support as well. Uh, Department of Public Safety. Tommy Johnson okay, was to be here in person, uh, but sends testimony. Uh, ADC, James Nakatani okay, also sends communication uh, in support. Uh, we do have uh, Russell Suchi, are you on Zoom for DLNR? IT? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. I Thank you, yes. Chair. Russell Tsuji for Land Division. We we support the chair uh, nomination and request your favorable consideration today. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Russell. Okay. Um, also uh, on Zoom, uh, testifying for the Hawaii County Council uh, District Three, um, my council person uh, Susan Eloy. They're not present on Zoom. Okay. She sends. Um, testimony as well. Uh, I'm sure they're probably in session as, as we speak. Um, Hawaii Kettleman's Council, uh, Nicole Galassi on Zoom. Thank, thank you, Chair Inouye, Vice Chair Elefante, members of the committee. I'm Nicole Galassi on behalf of the Hawaii Kettleman's Council. Don Chang has shown her ability to be a fair and extremely competent leader. And as stated before, she's taken the time to meet with DLNR leaseholders on the ground. We stand in our testimony, um, our written testimony in support. Mahalo. Okay. Uh, thank you, Nico. Uh, we do have Ko'olau Foundation, uh, Mahialani. Is that for? Ko'olau Foundation says, um, oh, um. Okay. Mahalo. Okay. Testifying for uh, countrytalkstory.com. June James, you're on Zoom. Aloha, can you hear me? Yes, we certainly can. Okay. Aloha, okay. proceed. I, have, I hope everybody's doing well. I think first we need to agree that every nominee is a good person and a nice person with a wonderful ohana. And we, but we expect all our elected officials to be logical, deliberate, and independent in their decision making for the public good. With all the coloring at this session, the primary focus of this nomination ought to be whether the nominee is the right person for the position of public trust and public good. In this case, we believe that the governor is putting a round hole into a square peg with this nomination. The DLNR encompasses 1.3 million acres of state land, beaches, coastal window, uh, coastal waters, state parks, historical sites, forests, aquatic life and so on, fishing area, boating, ocean recreation, and so on and so forth. 
but based on Don Chang's record, consenting this nominee would be like allowing the fox to guard the hen house. The risks are too great, and based on her long years of record, the bottom line is that she is just not the right fit for this job. I first met um, Don Chang <coughs> at the Turtle Bay Resort uh, controversy. She was hired by Replay Resort in around 20... Uh, June, I, your time is up. Can you just wind up right now? Okay, she was hired to do a job and she did her job, which is perfectly fine. But Don Chang has continued to do similar jobs for other corporations and developers. Thank, thank you. It's your choice of. Thank you. Your time is up. I'm sorry. Hawaii Farm Bureau. I did see uh, Brian Miyamoto, uh, but I guess his time. Uh, yeah, I, I did see him earlier and he left, he's left. He sends communication in support. Uh, Heia, uh, National Esterin uh, Research Service. Uh, Kavika, Kavika Winter. Well, Aloha, oh, thank you for bearing with us. No problem. Kavika Winter, director of the Heia National Esterin Research Reserve, which is the organization that Auntie Rocky spoke of earlier. I stand on my written testimony in support, but I just wanted to share when I started the job in 2018, Don Chang reached out to me and said, Hey, how can I help? And she did that not because she was a paid consultant, not because she was in some official capacity, but she's a community leader who believes in collaborative management between communities and the state. She believes in culturally community based conservation. And she would talk about, she would mention her aspirations. Oh, maybe one day I could be chair. And I could see in her heart, it's because she sees this as her best possible chance to make a positive difference in Hawaii. So, okay. Mahalo. thank you. Thank you very much. Testifying for friends of Panama Bay, Lisa Bishop on Zoom. Aloha. Aloha, Senator, um, Vice Chair and committee members. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to testify with these comments on this particular nomination. Uh, in February, we were a signatory on a joint letter of concern sent to Governor Green and Interim Chair Chang about a decision made late in the last administration by DAR, which left DLNR without a critical institutional knowledge or the leadership of any state employee with expertise or experience in the natural resource management and restoration of Hawaiian corals. We were also concerned that two FY22 federal earmarks on coral projects within DAR have or will be changed without engagement with the many community stewards and leaders that provided written support for them as funded. We had further asked in our letter that outside oversight and the incoming DLNR chair, whoever that is, reassess the direction that DAR has taken to prioritize outsourcing management and restoration of Hawaiian corals to inexperienced entities who are not accountable to Hawaii residents, community stewards, and Hawaii's marine wildlife for their work. These decisions have created unhelpful trust issues between community stewards and DLNR to the detriment of Hawaii's corals. We need objectives. Lisa, uh, Lisa, Lisa, I'm sorry, yes. your time is up. However, in your testimony, uh, and I guess we did receive it, so we will make a copy and ensure that uh, the chair has um, your communications. Thank you very much, okay. Senator. Aloha. All right. Randy Cates. Thank you, Lorraine, Senator Rain, and committee members. I'm Randy Cates. Um, a lot of the issues you guys discussed today, I've been intimately involved. Um, I'm here to support Don Chang. I did not know her before her appointment, but there's two key areas that I've been involved with. One is on the fishing working group. I'm a member and we've been meeting for over six years. The last administration, the deal on our chair attended our meetings once. Since she's been appointed, she's been on every, every meeting and hearing from fishers. I testified in front of your committee. She heard what was said and it came out very clear. She reached out and asked more questions and changed directions on, on a 30 by 30. So 
That's a big step. The second thing is every chairperson gets tested. And since the early 90s, I've been involved with dead whales, vessel groundings, military mishaps in the ocean. Uh, you, any crisis in the ocean, I've been involved. Port Royal grounding. And every chairperson gets tested. She has already proven herself early on in that test. I was involved in that vessel grounding of Nicola. Um, and I can tell you that she asked the right questions. She gave our, our support and she was concerned about safety and most importantly, the environment. And she made the right decision and the, and the hard call. Thank, thank you, All right, Randy. Thank you. thank you so much. Okay. Uh, David Kimo Branco. Aloha. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Don Chang is smooth, but I don't believe she has the integrity to run the uh, Borderland Natural Resources. She signed a contract with Kalahama Church to provide legal advice regarding historic preservation. And then she put the, her thumb on the scale. She recommended a process that excluded Hawaiians from a meaningful participation process. She tells you that she's all about process. It's a sham process that lets people say things but not have any influence in the decision. We have her emails. We don't have gossip from anonymous employees. Attached to my testimony are the emails that she sent. It was her decision to make a recommendation to the church to circumvent the law, to advise them to circumvent the law. That was her recommendation that would exclude Hawaiians from a meaningful opportunity to participate in the process. I would encourage you to please read those emails. Those are her words that she did, that she wrote in order to expedite the process of removal of burials and exclude Hawaiians from meaningful participation. Thank you. Thank you. We'll call Rebecca soon, um, but the chair would like to make just a brief note um, before Rebecca comes up, if she's here, um, that this committee received a written testimony um, from Edward Hale Aloha Ayao, which references a change dot, dot, change dot org petition uh, signed in opposition uh, to GM 516. And just to alert uh, the petition, those that signed that uh, the petitioners who had signed the petition has included their addresses. And so just for transparency and clarency, I would like to say as a courtesy to these petitioners, we want to let you know that the committee posts all written testimony as a public record. And so just to advise most of you that whoever signed it, that addresses now become public record. Um, <clears throat> and uh, to add that a uh, large portion of the petitioners who signed uh, are not Hawaii residences. Uh, Rebecca Soon uh, sends testimony uh, in support, she was to be here in person. Um, Elizabeth Kent, are you on Zoom? Aloha. Aloha. Thank you for the opportunity to testify in strong support of Ms. Chang's nomination. Don has shown a willingness to take on difficult and controversial issues. We need leaders who will address these, address these kinds of issues and not shy away from them. Dawn has a history of taking on these hard issues. She also has a history of listening to diverse views and engaging the community and then making informed decisions based on her experience and expertise. Dawn's history shows that she is a decisive leader. I ask you to vote yes on her nomination. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Re uh, Roberta Cabral. Are you on Zoom? Oh. You're, you're, Senator. Oh, yes. Madam Chair. I'm still the Lorraine that everybody knows. That's yes. fine as well. I apologize. No problem. Madam Chair, 
Vice Chair, members of the Senate Committee, I'm here to testify in strong support of Don Chang. I've known Don for over 20 years. I've witnessed her firsthand in her role in the Hawaiian community, where she helped to manage the Department of Interior controversial uh, meeting and how her leadership and her heart this job is such a critical job. There's 1.3 million acres of the state lands which Hawaiians have a strong interest in. Um, I encourage that Don would make a great leader in this. She's great with people. She understands the different stakeholders and the interest to um, uh, the people in Hawaii as well as the Native Hawaiian community. So I appreciate strong support for her. Mahalo. Thank, thank you, Bobby. Uh, Peter Adler, you're on Zoom. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha, Chair and Vice Chair and members of the committee. Um, I will stand on my testimony, but I would urge you to read the last four paragraphs, which are in part address some of the criticisms that have emerged about her consultant work. I do similar kinds of work, uh, and I've worked, I've known Dawn for a long time. I support her nomination. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Mahalo. Kapono Chang. Hello, Chair, Vice Chair. Aloha. Uh, um, uh, committee members, I'm Kapono Chang, um, Don Chang, Jungus' son, and I uh, strongly support my mom for the position. Um, I stand behind my, let me take my lap, stand behind my testimony, just wanted to provide a couple comments. Um, throughout my life, my mom has been the most hardest working person that I know and the two values that I will always remember and continue to pass on to my boys is her um, passion for knowledge and for work ethic and also her passion to malama not just to take care but also to give back and growing up she showed us or took us to many nonprofit organizations and met a lot of leaders in the community and the most important one in my life was Dr. Emmett Aluli, who recently passed, and he guided me to um, go into medical school. And I'm in my last year of family medicine residency at UH and going to a geriatric fellowship next year to also uh, serve our kupuna. So strongly uh, support my mom. Mahalo and our best wishes to you as well. Thank you. We're proud of you. Uh, Christina Meller. And followed by, I do see the Department of Agriculture uh, director here ret has returned, so follow up with that as well. Mahalo. Mahalo. Yeah, aloha. I'm a retired state planner, and I had four years of privilege to work with Don Chang. And she really helped at the Hanalei voting issue, where it was Hawaiian families against Hawaiians and to, have, to resolve it. And the four things that she really helped on was establishing cultural native Hawaiian access, hunting, fishing, and gathering rights over private lands. This includes the ones in Molokai. This includes Lutkin House on the Big Island. This includes Waipilo Valley, also on the Big Island. She was very responsible in getting those things done. And to indemnify landowners who gave access, especially when Molokai was burning down when I first got into the department, there was no access because it was all private lands. And she made it possible mm -hmm. for us to go in there and manage it as part of Nahali Trails Prison. So I strongly say she needs to be there. Aloha. Thank Mahalo. You. And I know you from that past because you were mayor at that time. Thank you. <laughs> Mahalo. Okay. I, I do see uh, Department of Ag followed by uh, the Office of Governor. Aloha. Hey, good and afternoon. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Senators. Um, Senator. state, state your name again for the okay. record. <laughs> Chair and her Department of Agriculture. Chairperson. Thank you. Oh. So, Ooh. I'm here in strong support of Don. You know I'm a crier. <laughs> yes, we're all Wahinis and we'll all work hard together yeah, too. It's a, it's a curse. Um, you know, uh, Don and I were real quick to uh, recognize that we were good together. And the Department of Agriculture is the other half of Athiney. Mm -hmm. And 
She's a master. She knows her land. She knows her rules. She knows when right. She knows so much about Act 90 that I just listen and I learn. But I think we've made so much progress. To not bring her over to Act 90 now would be a... I mean, we, we're going to make it, but right now we've made so much progress. We even have a timeline. So I really, I really hope that uh, you consider that and uh, confirm Don to go on to the full Senate. Thank you. Well, that'll be great for Act 90, the three Wahinis <laughs> that working hard. I'm so happy that we don't have to create bills to address <laughs> things that you guys should be doing. Yeah. And I'm so happy that it, it'll be done at, administratively. Thank you. Mahalo for all of the agriculture industry people. All right, thank you. Governor's office. Aloha. Aloha. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Blake Oshara, Senior Advisor for the Governor. Uh, you have our written testimony and strong support. Um, I just wanted to make a few personal comments. Um, you know, I've interacted with Dawn over the years in various capacities while she's worked on different projects. And I've always been extremely impressed at her intelligence and her ability to just be ex extremely professional in any given situation, even high pressure situations, even contentious situations. She walks in with a calmness and a seriousness and gives everybody the respect that they really deserve. And she is really highly dedicated to the idea of process, to this idea that people need to have a forum in which they can actually express themselves and have their considerations heard. And I think that is so important when it comes to this department because it has such high controversial issues at times. And I know that she is going to be more than capable to handle any of those. People may not be always satisfied at the end, but I am confident in the belief that she will always make sure they are heard. And so we will stand in strong support of her. Thank you. Mahalo, thank you for your presence. Okay, Tina, Leah, you're on Zoom. Aloha. Thank you. I'm a, Aloha. I'm opposed to Don Chang's confirmation. Under her leadership, the BLNR has violated the public's rights to open. Complaints have been filed with the Ombudsman and a violation of the Sunshine Laws under review by the OIP. The BLNR has a, a silence discussion of very serious information provided in written testimony regarding a FONSI that received final approval by BLNR. The suppressed testimony includes peer-reviewed studies about the risks of the project to the environment, native birds, and public health. It also includes documentation of procedural errors, specific conflicts of interest, potential intersport of pathogens, and lack of permitting, failure to receive EPA approval for use of a biopesticide prior to public safety, and EPA discreditation of the article cited in the final environmental assessment, asserting that the biopesticides no risk to human health. Further, Chang refused to recuse herself from voting and did not adequately address BFLICs of interest. The BLNR chair must serve with integrity and honor the laws enacted to protect the public. Her action not qualify her for the position. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Deborah Ward, you're on Zoom as well, IT. Is the support one of the support? Yes, Chair. Who passed for me? I'm going to put you Aloha, Debbie. Proceed. Aloha. Uh, aloha e kako, and thank you, Chair Inoue and, and members of the committee for hearing us. Um, I have so much to say that a minute isn't close enough, but I want to bring up uh, the fact that engagement must include not only stakeholders. Uh, Debbie, uh, you must state your position, oppose or support, and then continue. Um, I, I oppose. Uh, the reason is that um, I think that uh, Ms. Chang has got to include the um, concerns of the right holders because she would be the trustee of Crown and government lands that were never ceded to the state of Hawaii, and she has a fiduciary responsibility to the right holders, the beneficiaries of the land. We treat as our commons as if the utilization of the commons can be done by anyone who's a resident of the state. And as such, for example, she met with the stakeholders uh, the fishers and made a unilateral decision at that point to remove the 30 by 30, but she did not consider the right holders and those of us who are residents who have been working on the nearshore water 
um, pro challenges of the fisheries and the uh, aquarium collecting for the last 15 years. And um, so by only meeting with certain stakeholders and not the right holders, which are the general public and the native Hawaiians who use those uh, lands for traditional cultural practices, she is selecting who she will listen to. Um, I'm trying to figure out how many more minutes I have, but I, I think you're, I think you're done, Debbie. Thank you. S sorry. Thank you very much. Um, I'll continue on to the Zoom. We have just a few and then we'll go back to the in-person as well. Uh, Riley Smith on Zoom. What can I say in a minute? It's a minute 20. Yeah. Aloha, Chair uh, Inouye and members of the committee. Uh, I stand with, with my testimony that has been submitted in strong support of Don Chang as the chair of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Uh, I am the Hawaii Island resident um, representative of the Board of Land and Natural Resources. Um, my, in my testimony, I explained that I've had the opportunity to work with Don for the last three months. You know, I'm impressed with her diligence, you know, along with someone who has a lot of passion we get someone who's also an attorney, uh, works with the AG's office, is very familiar with Hawaii revised statutes and make sure that the decisions we make are proper and appropriate. Um, earlier, she had mentioned that her staff is comprised of Native Hawaiians. I wanted to also let you know that this is the first time the seven members of the Board of Land and Natural Resources are also Native Hawaiian. So I, I hope you take this opportunity uh, Dawn does her homework. She gets out in the community before she makes a decision. She's very informed, and I wholeheartedly support her as the chair for DLNR. Thank, 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 thank you, you very you, much. Ray. Thank You're you, Riley. Uh, Tiari Lawrence on Zoom. Aloha, chair and committee members. I'm here on behalf Aloha. of our non. I'm here on behalf of our nonprofit Kamalu Okahala Vai, in strong support of Don Chang's nomination. In a recent BLNR hearing, I was rather surprised by the energy and how she conducted the meeting. It was very refreshing. I believe she is willing to work with the community in finding solutions, which we've seen her do recently on Maui. When she came over to Honolulu to come and address the situation with the beach boat, and for years we've been asking department heads from DLNR to come, and it was just really nice that she came. So I'm here in strong support. And I have faith that she will once and for all address the corruption in Dobar, or, or at least I hope she will. Mahalo. Thank you, Ntiari. Okay. Hi, Nishiki, on Zoom. You're now present on Zoom. Okay. Mahalo. Um, Michael Bulachok. Also not present on, on Zoom. Zoom. Chair. Chair. Oh, okay. You're here. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Good afternoon, Michael Goyu Jr. I'm here in my personal capacity. Um, happy National Day, uh, transgender, transgender, transgender Day of Visibility. Um, I, I, I'm here just to provide comments uh, because I've heard from my fellow, fellow former friend, my friend, no, it's not my friends, the former uh, colleagues that work at DLNR, and they wanted to speak to, they've told me that Dawn is a breath of fresh air. She has brought uh, light into the office that they, uh, no longer go to work in fear. As we saw splashed across the front page that there's a lot to be done at DLNR and that they feel that she is up to the task. Um, that this has been a, although she's only been there for 90 days, that it's great to have somebody of her caliber who's willing to listen to them. Okay. So but thank you. Mahalo, mahalo for um, taking time off your schedule. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, just making sure you're not gonna correct my testimony this time. No, okay. we're not. <laughs> Did well. <laughs> Edna Shiroma. My name is Edna Yaloha Paoleho Pano Shiroma. Aloha. I'm going to read this the whole time. Am I? Fine. I come from the, I'm a native Hawaiian, and I come from the Ho'okana Ohana from Ahalu and St. John's by the Sea. 
I am here to support Don's nomination as chairman for the Department of Natural Resources. The public knows her as Don, but to me, she is not only. Her father was Walter Shiroba. He served in the military. Novi no, grew up in Kariuri. She is the eldest of five children. She attended El Kei Elementary School, graduated from the Priory High School. She went to the mainland for a couple of years of college, came back and attended the University of Hawaii and graduated with her master's in social work. After a couple of years, she decided to become a lawyer. My husband and I instilled the importance of family, community, and, and state to our children. Nomi has always felt the need to serve our community and help Native Hawaiians. My Ho'okanohohana has Kuleana lands up Mauka in Kahalu'u, as well as lands near the ocean at St. John's by the Sea. The, the Kuleana lands, we plant taro and was fishing in St. John's by the Sea. I know she will make a good chairman for the DLNR because she has the values and integrity to protect the ocean and all its resources. I am proud that she values education and is setting a good example for young girls, especially Native Hawaiians, who want to be leaders in our community and of Hawaii. I strongly support her nominations for the chairman of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. I thank Governor Green for having the confidence in the only to do what is needed to ensure our resources are protected for Hawaii. Mahalo, Nui Loa. Thank you. Mahalo as well. Are you related to the Paolis from Molokai? You know, the Hokaros have relations with <laughs> Molokai. <laughs> you did say you're a Paoli too. Okay. Aloha. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Korean Lao. Aloha. Aloha, Chair Inouye, Vice Chair Elefante, and members of the committee. My name is Corey Ann Lau. I'm here to strongly support Don Chang for this uh, nomination. I submitted written support that talks about um, how qualified Don is. She may be the most qualified person ever to be appointed uh, to be nominated for this position. But I'd like to be to actually speak now to her character and integrity and the fact that she conducts herself with the high, to the highest ethical standards. She's trustworthy, she's honest. I've known her for over 40 years and she's always been accountable. The buck will stop with her. Um, she's into problem solving, she's thorough and dedicated to solutions. She's thoughtful, she doesn't act rashly. She reviews the issues and, and all the opinions before choosing her course of action. The most of all though, she brings people together. She looks for what unites people rather than what divides them. And she loves Hawaii. She loves the people and is dedicated to the stewardship of the land. Thank you. Mahalo. Dana Williams. Aloha. Hi, Aloha. Um, Thank you, committee members. Uh, my name is Dana Williams. I'm here in support of Dawn Chang. Most know her as Dawn, but to me, she is mom. My mom raised my brothers and I to be independent thinkers, to do what we believe in and to find a passion. But the most important virtues she has instilled are to help give a voice to those who may not have one and to do what is right, even when it is hard. She has spent her career empowering Native Hawaiians while also protecting and preserving our lands and resources, making her the right person for this position. My mom is thoughtful, compassionate, and fair, all necessary qualities and a great leader. In her short time holding this position, she has made tough and just decisions while maintaining her integrity in that of the DLNR. My freshman year of college was tough. 
I remember calling my mom every day, crying and begging her to let me come home. The mainland was a huge adjustment for an island girl. But no matter how many phone calls and tears shed, my mom always told me, stay the course. Trust that this is where you need to be, even though it is hard. There aren't enough words to express my gratitude to her for making me feel heard and loved and for helping me to persevere. Excuse me, sorry. In closing, I humbly ask you to confirm her nomination as chairperson for the Department of Land and Natural Resources. And to my mom, I am proud to be your daughter. Stay the course. Trust that this is where you need to be, even if it is hard. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Roy Kaiser. Good afternoon. Um, yeah, I flew in from the Big Island. I'm a Big Island fisherman. I also sit on the West Hawaii Fisheries Council and the Working Group for DLNR for Fishermen. And I stand by my testimony in strong support of Don Chang. I'd also like to add a lot of the, the negatives you're going to hear is from a lot of the environmental groups. A lot of these groups are bringing in a lot of money from outside. The first thing that, that Don said was trying to build back the trust in the department because I have my head in the water and my boat's on the water almost every day. So I, I live it, I'm a conservationist by heart, but we have been misrepresentative and not representative by the past chairman. Her ties to the environmental groups have been strong. Don, while we have agreed that maybe we're not always gonna agree, at least we get heard, because we haven't been heard. It's, it's, it's a living for us. So I really wanna have a good support for her and I thank you very much. Thank you, Kanani Kealalio. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Kanani Kealalio. I stand on my testimony in strong support of Dawn. I have worked with her for 20 years at Kuivalu. I was hoping to not be called up right after her family visiting <laughs> to her children. <laughs> I watched her raise her children and now her grandchildren. Um, stay the course is her mantra. You talk about her integrity. I know no one else with that her integrity is beyond reproach. The projects that she's taken on that were probably the most emotional and the most mentally draining were also probably the most rewarding. Maybe not always the outcome that she was looking for or, or anyone was looking for, both sides. But she gave the public and especially the Native Hawaiian community a place to be heard, a safe place to speak and voice their opinion. And that is, that is, what, that is what she wants to bring to the department. Part of what she was doing in Kuibalu, the engagement with the community, she wants, she's, implementing it now within the department. I thank you for your time. And you're in the department as well? I am. Okay. Mahalo. Thank you. Tom Kaufman. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, Mahalo. Uh, I'm speaking in opposition to her nomination. Um, I think that um, a bigger context has been lost in this hearing, and that is the severity and multiplicity of crises that we're facing with the environment. Uh, and they, do, they run from sea level rise to uh, species endangerment, uh, incessant pressure for development, myconia, on and on. When we fill, we repair the fish ponds, do the fish ponds get filled with mud because of the upstream problems and so on and so on. And so from this big picture environmental point of view, I think that the nominee, good person that she is, is a mismatch because of her numerous and long-standing relationships through her business, 
with developers. Her business primarily was consulting with developers, however else you parse it. I accept her th a theme of conciliation and empowerment as genuine. But this great challenge of this department and of our environment in totality is not about gender, it's not about ethnicity, it's not about whether she's a good person <laughs> or other legislature's relationship with the governor or anything like that. We need a proactive leader, teacher, and champion of the environment. And for this reason alone, I am testifying for a no vote. Thank, thank you, Tom. Micah uh, Hicks uh, requested to speak in person and he's in opposition. Um, this concludes all of those that um, signed in. Uh, is there anyone here who wishes to speak? Uh, please, okay, the woman in the back the gentleman there, and then this one here. We'll get to all of you. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Tara Aloha. Rojas, and I would like to say that- uh, as Will I, you state your name? Tara please. Rojas, Tara Rojas. And I'd like to state that uh, as the previous testifier and other testifiers said, you know, as a person, good heart, a family member. However, I'm gonna speak on behalf of the position in itself in this system and so are you know, in support or opposition i'm going to oppose i'm in opposition because of benefiting socio economically and politically you know from the subjugation of hawaiians and sovereign rights who prote protect and preserve as in accordance with the mission and vision of the dnnr however another part of the mission and vision of the dnnr is and there is no balance in this because the raising of revenue always seems to be the focus so the mindset of raising revenue, you know, overrides the pr protection and presence. And I would just like to say that in a knowing violation of the jurisdiction that state does not trump federal, that there, there needs to be recognition of this, this fact. And so I would just like to say that the TMT situation, you know, will never be built. The, the air, you know, will prevail. The DOD leases as well are up, as well as the UH lease on Mauna Kea yeah. will be up. Yeah. And so, yeah. Thank so you I'm very much. Your time is up. Mahalo. Thank you. All right. Aloha. Aloha, Chair, Vice Chair. My name is JC Watson. I'm here today in my personal capacity. I sit on many boards and organizations to be able to represent all of them. So I'm here for me. Uh, I'm here in strong support of Dawn. I first met her in 2015 when she helped to facilitate the creation of the Hawaii Interagency Biosecurity Plan, um, as well as many other things during the time. Um, as a land manager, conservationist, a father, and a dreamer, I can't understate this, that you know the bottom line is I trust her. And I urge you guys to do the same. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. There was a, the gentleman with the hat. I'm sorry, first, and then you to follow. Mahalo. Oh, oh. No, no. No, no. Follow you, you. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. No, no, you. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't see that he raised his hand. Did he raise his hand? Okay. Yeah. Proceed. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Nelson Ho. Good afternoon, Senators. I wrote a Star Advertiser opinion piece in December 2022. It reflected my concerns about this nomination at that time. They are the same. I'm opposed. I have spent 40 years as a volunteer environmental activist and now realize that too much of that time was spent fighting bad deal in our policies and decisions. My concerns about Don Chang cluster around her continued involvement with Mauna Kea. The Hawaiians won, okay? Today, the UH and DNR no longer have absolute rule 
over the sacred landscape. How will Ms. Chang interact with the new Mauna Kea Stewardship Authority? Making hard decisions is one thing, sharing decision-making power is another thing entirely. And if she can change herself, does she have the skill set to reform the 900 employee corporate structure that is the LNR? Mahalo for your Aloha. time. Thank you for flying in as well. Okay, the, the gentleman with the mask and the gentleman with the hat in the back. Aloha. Uh, thank you, Chair Inoue and members of the committee. My name is Gary Okuda. I'm speaking in strong support of Don Chang. I've spent the last six years serving with her on the State Land Use Commission. When she talks about collaboration, it's not BS or bogus. She pushes for collaboration and her collaboration gets results. For example, there was a project on Maui, a housing project, which the community was totally opposed. John, Don's constant mantra about collaboration, 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 basically forced the applicant developer to go back, meet with the community, and what resulted an affordable rental project which the developer promised not to flip or to do things for profit. Don Chang knows where she came from. That's one of the reasons why, for example, the Land Use Commission denied the request of the city and county of Honolulu to keep that Waimanalo Gulch landfill open for eternity. That's what their request was because frankly, you're right, Senator Favela, it's enough of throwing trash in the backyards of Hawaiians. And the final point is this, in, in the commission hearings, it's Don Chang, notwithstanding all of these claims that she's some, some type of developer puppet, but she's the one who asked the kapa'akai questions of these, of these experts. When they claim they've, they've dug enough trenches, she'll say, what about the adjoining properties? Have you talked to people in the community? And when they give a list, she'll say, no, you didn't talk to these other elders. She's the one who knows to hold people accountable. And the final point is this, sometimes Don Chang even has a crystal ball. Now this might seem like a Manini matter, but this Kihei High School fiasco that's going on. In 2019, Don Chang told the Department of Education, the law requires you to build this great separated pedestrian crossing and if you don't build it, this is in 2019, you're not going to open the school. And so Don has the track record. I've seen it with my own eyes. And frankly, I knew nothing about Don Chang until I started serving with her six years ago. So if you can just consider my Manini opinion, please, and confirm her as chair. Mahalo. Thank you. Okay. Aloha. Aloha. My name's DeGray Vanderbilt, and um, I'm here to say that I really appreciate something that I heard Don Chang say today, which was she was not going to kick the can down the road. And I'd like to relate that to the Kalapapa Memorial. Can you state your position, opposed or support? My position is neither. Because we, at this Share point, your comments. Yeah, just my comments. And um, it's languished for 20 years after, uh, through needless bureaucracy. All the work's been done. And... Uh, the memorial was conceived by the residents of Kalapapa. The legislature appropriated $5 million for its construction. I appreciate, especially uh, you, Senator Chang and Senator Inouye, for when the residents came over, you spent a lot of time. Uh, we're a Native Hawaiian organization, and uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't send Pauline Chow's aloha to you. Uh, she's on our board and she's 
getting up there now, but he and you grew up on the big island together. So anyway, I just was here to say, hopefully, uh, the memorial's been kicked down the road so long through needless bureaucracy that it's in fragments right now, and but it's ready to go. And I'm, I think, uh, I'm just hopeful that uh, it will move forward. And thank you. Mahalo, I thought I recognize you sitting in the back. Thank you for taking your time to travel to Oahu. Going once, going twice, uh, almost aloha. One, two, three. Okay, come on up. And then you in the back there on my left and to my right there. Aloha, good afternoon, uh, Senators. Sorry, um, say my, your name. My name is Colon Chang. Um, I work for the DOD, not in any kind of a uh, contracting capacity. <laughs> I'm just an analyst at the at Tripler. Um, but I'm here on my personal uh, my personal statement is in support of Don Chang. Um, she is my mother. Um, so yes, indeed, there is some bias opinion, but I'm not addressing her as a mother, but as a personal wahine that has surfer, um, served her community, her people, and her state. Um, Dawn is a woman of high principles, values, and beliefs. She has also spoken up for people that could not be heard. Um, as a native Hawaiian, she has tried, or, sorry, she has thread the needle many times as a media, mediator slash consultant when facilitating meetings between the party that she represented and the local community. However, she has never let her personal views affect her ability to get the job done without compromising her values. She represents the kind of woman that many young girls can aspire to be and an excellent example of what hard work, grit, passion, and determination can overcome. Thank you. Mahalo. Aloha, my kako. My name is Dimat Manaole. I'm here with my wife, Aiko. Aloha. Oh, oh, we in strong support of Don. Uh, please forgive me, but I was supposed to have submitted my testimony a while ago, and I want to make sure for the record you guys understand we strongly support this still. Um, <laughs> when we um, called for her to come down and talk to us, um, at the Native Hawaiian community, she came to a place where I sell my food on um, Kailua, came, no problem. You know, she had a, her more Puna's basketball tournament, but she gave that up to come there. When the Kupuna Council called for her to come and talk to us, she came. When the last chair got her advice and consent, I specifically approached her right after she left the room. Would you be willing to talk to the Native Hawaiian community? She said, I don't have more time for that. And the entire time she was there, we never got to speak to her and our voice was never heard. But our voice is heard with Dawn. Finally, we get on Manavahine in the place that will protect our resources and listen to our voice. <laughs> My name is Aiko Manaole. I'm in strong support for Don Chang. Everything he just said, I had in my head I was going to say. So <laughs> I'll just okay. leave it at that. He just said everything. We are and by the way, we had to fly in from Waianae. <laughs> <laughs> we literally was working with a client and we, she said she's on and so we're here. And, and it's not un, it's not unlike you because you're here all the time and you did not submit your testimony in writing but we appreciate you driving over from y and i all right aloha okay aloha hello my kako chairman inoi members of the committee my aloha. name is ben schaefer and i support um, Ms. Chang and her new colleague. I think uh, she comes from a very well-known family in, in Kahalu, the Ho'okanos, Kalahikis. They have a long, long history. So she understands what the responsibilities are, what the kuleana is. She was with us last week in Kahana, as I'm, I'm a resident of Kahana, uh, talking with us and see how we can move that project forward as well. I'm also on the Oahu Island Burial Council and at the very beginning, she, she was willing to come and talk with us because uh, we haven't had anybody from the Attorney General's office in our meetings for quite a while. And so we're looking forward to working with her in, in, in ensuring that we have the representation from the Attorney General's office. Mahalo. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Okay, mahalo. Thank you very much. Okay, all right. Um, anyone else wishes to speak to the nominee? Uh, going once, going twice, pretty sure. much almost aloha, but I see one more hand there. Sure. Yes. Any follow-up questions? Sure, sure. Thank you, Chair. You know, I distinguish uh, members of the committee, Ken Kawahara, um, testifying on um, on a personal note. Um, I got to know um, Don Chang uh, recently when she was nominated, I had um, some very good conversations with her. Uh, I had submitted writ written testimony and I stand in strong support of Don. Um, I wasn't planning to be here, but I was able to catch a, a earlier flight on standby. So I'm really glad I made it. And I'd just like to say as a former DLNR employee, I think she has what it takes. It's a very challenging position and there's a lot of stress and I think she can handle it well. So I think she would do a great job and I stand in strong support. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we, uh, we are done with our testimonies and uh, members of the committee, any further questions or comments you'd like to ask the nominee? Thank you, Senator Favela. Just, just two. Andre. Um, hello. Back. Um, I just wanted to ask you, do you know um, about what's happening in the Bureau of Convenience section? If, do you have a specific question? Yeah, the specific question is that we're outsourcing our, uh, I guess it's part of the land division and overlooking certain things to the Philippines. Do you know anything about that? You know, Senator, I'm sorry, I do not know specifics. I know that we are digitizing all of our files. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's what you're referring to. Yeah, so later on, I, I really want to speak with you because it's okay. concerning that the person that is uh, having to outsource, okay is also have um, conflict of interest because you have business and you should be minding the business and not doing that. Mm -hmm. So everybody has a concern of your consulting work and you already told everybody how you separated yourself from that. Very touching testimony on your family, your children, um, your mom. Very impressed on um, their upbringing and your upbringing. Um, but I just want to touch on one more thing that is talked about. I get planning more, but I'll just okay. wait till the next time we see each other. Because it's a Bible, you know what I mean? But anyway, we don't want to do it till Jesus comes. Then anyway. I can go home tonight. No, no, no. Yes. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. One more, one more. Yeah. 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 Okay, so what is your position regarding the rights and property interest to the Native Hawaiians on Crown and government land as held in trust and in your fiduciary duties as a DLNR? Um, or its beneficiaries, and how will you assure uh, that these rights address and protected? What about the LNR's approach and should um, be improved? Get your sleeping bags out. That's a long question, Senator. No, uh, I appreciate the question. I mean, that's, um, we have a public trust duty. These are public trust lands, especially ceded lands. Um, our responsibility is to ensure that these lands are held in trust, not only for this generation, but for future generations. I appreciated the testimony regarding Kapa Akai. I take that very seriously. The Kapa Akai analysis should be done for any matters that may affect you know, Native Hawaiians' rights to continue to grab, gather and exercise their traditional practices. Right. So that's something that we're, that um, I'm going to ensure in DLNR that we're doing that. I think Ahamoku councils, we do rely upon them to a large extent to provide us some independent assessment as to what are the resources that may be in a particular area. But I've, I, I've done training courses with different state agencies on Kapa Akai. So I am very familiar with the analysis and I look to all of the projects that come before us that there is an identification of what these resources are what impacts do the, the proposed project have on those resources? And then looking at how do we fulfill our constitutional obligation? And I know when I sat on the Land Use Commission and Gary Okuda shared with, with me, I mean, there were times when, when I said, I have no other choice but to deny your permit because you have not satisfied the Kapa Akai analysis. You have not given me sufficient information for me to make a determination of whether those resources will be impacted. 
So I am very comfortable what are what the constitutional obligations are of the board and the water commission, and I will ensure that we fulfill those at the department. Yes, just one more. Um, I, I just want to thank you um, and as a native Hawaiian and bringing back the voice of our people for our land and our natural resources. It means a lot to me yeah. talking with you over days and mm -hmm. your compassion that you had for mm -hmm. Sam Souza mm -hmm. uh, when he approached you at the mm -hmm. Waianae Moko. Having that kind of compassion for a person that I told him to be a little bit more calm <laughs> and not so all right like me. But anyway, I just appreciate you and I thank you for that. No, thank appreciate you very it. much. I mean, I have been one as a social worker, um, you know, working with Hawaiian families, um, doing a lot of the, the consultation work that I was doing, including Native Hawaiian burials. These have been families who have not been, um, they've not been engaged in what should be done. How do we avoid impacts? Historically, our, our communities, especially Native Hawaiian communities, have not been involved in, in, in informed decision making, whether they are Waimanalo, Kahuku, or Mauna Kea. So it is the role of the department to ensure that we create the space, the opportunities to genuinely engage with our Native Hawaiian communities. At the end of the day, um, we don't know what the outcome of those decisions are. But like I said, I'm processed. I think people feel that they can accept a, an outcome if they feel like they were part of the process. And for me, Senator, it's all about trust and it's about reestablishing trust with the government. A lot of people have not trusted DLNR, so, um, but we have good people that work there. We have a hard mission. So part of my mission is to reestablish trust, is to do the good work, to be out there in the community, to listen. And um, yeah, sometimes it is to make hard decisions, but I will tell you, I love this job. I love being the DLNR chairperson. I go home every day, I'm tired. But most days I go home good kind tired, like I feel like mm -hmm. I've done something, you know? Um, so I have appreciated the opportunity that the governor has given me. I appreciate you providing me the opportunity to tell you my story. I love being the deal of our chair. Mm -hmm. And when I said my staff has got my back, they literally have my back, but I have their back. I will be there. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Um, here's, shall we recess then? Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. The um, committee will go into recess for decision making. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, IT. Uh, the Committee on Water and Land on its agenda item of Friday, March 31st, um, with regards to GM 516, uh, submitting the confirmation and consideration to the DLNR chairperson, uh, GM 516, as noted, Don Chang, for a term to expire December 31st, 2026. The chair's recommendation in the committee is to vote to advise and consent. And I'd like to add that the nominee certainly has demonstrated extraordinary leadership, leadership skills during her brief time as DLNR chairperson. She has shown a willingness to work with others, including all of us here at the legislature other departments and community stakeholders, even those who do not agree with her positions. Dawn has repeatedly emphasized that her process will always include making sure others are heard. It has been a privilege of mine and the committee on this water and land to work with her over these past 90 days 
to improve the state's natural and cultural resources. Over 20 years ago, I introduced and the governor signed into law Act 90. Here we are 20 years later, and action is finally being to transfer lease lands to DOA to empower ranchers and farmers who desperately need those lands. And we also talk about food sustainability. Don is certainly an extraordinary character. And it is my privilege to offer to my committee to confirm, to vote uh, in, to advise and consent Don Chang as DLNR and BLNR chairperson. Vice Chair, any further comments? Committee members, Senator McCalvey. Thank you so much and thank you, um, Director, for being here and answering the tough questions. You know, you come a long way. When I first came in, even the chair here was like, we gotta do something about Don Chang. <laughs> I got a slew of emails and phone calls and some of the people who were originally in opposition have submitted testimony to support you because of what you have done since then. That being said, you know, you're moving forward and continuing it. But that being said, I brought up the issues that are there. And there's gonna be times where you're gonna to need to choose community and fighting corruption over those in the department. These issues were created and continue to steamroll because of the changes that need to be made. So I am humbly going to go with reservations for right now, but I know you're gonna do a good job in addressing this. I would also urge the time between now and the floor session to meet with those who have expressed their opposition because you've already been doing that and won them over and such. And I know that you're gonna be able to rise to the challenges you have, but I cannot stamp what has been going on. So I have to express my reservations, not on you, but based on that. But I know you're up to the challenge and you've always been, you've been rising to the challenge ever since. So I hope you accept the vote and my concerns for what it's worth. And I appreciate you being here and appreciate you chair and moving this discussion forward to the floor. So thank you. Thank you, any further? Uh, I will be in strong support, Sen Chair. Senator um, Favela. I thank you, Chair. I'm in strong support. Um, she proved it to me in a short time of knowing her. My big thing was that she went to the West Side. You know, the previous uh, person, I don't really mention her name, Suzanne Case. But anyway, um, <laughs> never had the compassion that Dawn has. And I really appreciate her and continue to highly recommend her and really to work with her. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, members. Okay, um, members then, uh, the Chair's recommendation is to advise and consent GM 516 as the Chairperson of DLNR for a term to expire December 31st, 2026. Chair votes aye. Okay. Chair's recommendation is to advise and consent on GM 516. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey. A reservation. Senator Favela. Aye. Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, this concludes the uh, Water and Land Commission hearing of March 31st. Aloha.